escaped my mind. What is what is Sakba Mommy Lori? What's Sakba Mommy Lori? It has escaped my head. It has run away from my mind. I was gonna give a point. Ah, what is Sakba Mom? Oh Sakba Mom. It was a good point as well. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, make sure you're joining me for the first time. You're welcome to my channel. I do videos about mindset, lifestyle design, uh, positivity, and financial independence. So if you like this type of content, do subscribe, like, and comment down below. So today we will be talking about the imposter syndrome, um, how to identify it, how it affects life. Uh, I'm doing this because I, <laughs> I have this syndrome. So it's not an actual disease or a sickness, it's just what it's called. So imposter syndrome is a feeling that you don't deserve to be where you are in your achievements, maybe in your career, at work, in relationships. And I believe that it affects generally uh, people who have reached some level of achievement uh, and then they start to doubt themselves or doubt or feel that they reached this achievement out of luck. For me personally, I feel that I get this imposter syndrome, especially at work. Um, so I've been in my career in business analysis for almost six years and I've had so many achievements in my career and I just, I just find myself sometimes feeling like I don't deserve to be here or that, the, or that I'm going to get fired because of a little mistake or, you know, that fear of failure. Uh, despite my hard work, despite um, acknowledgements from colleagues, from um, companies that I've worked for, despite these things, I still have this inkling feeling that really... <laughs> you're not supposed to be here or this is not your place <laughs> you know what I mean uh, and especially on like when I work on projects and I feel like I don't know what I'm doing and I'm, and I'm like I really don't know what I'm doing should I be here is somebody else meant to be doing this job that I'm taking it from you know what I mean but I have worked so hard in my career for these many years so in deep down in my heart, I know that I deserve to be where where I am, but it's just it's just uncontrollable sometimes, you know. Um, and I feel that maybe a lot of people go through this as well. Uh, for me as well, um, a one one main factor that sort of bring this brings this on is also my accent. I don't know why I'm so. Um, maybe not presently, but like previously at the start of my career. I would either be like the only woman in IT, the youngest person in IT, the only black person sometimes, uh, and uh, or the, uh, the fact that I haven't lived or I wasn't born in this country or that I was born in Nigeria and raised there um, and my general attitude, I'm like a Nigerian person. But then at work, you see everybody's so professional and it just doesn't... I don't know what it is, but these are the, the little things I've mentioned that sort of affect me and feel like, girl, you're out of place in this place with all the older men. Um, <laughs> yes, so of course, a lot of times in my career, I work in IT and IT is mainly dominated by men, older men. Um, so yeah, th these, are, <laughs> these are the things really that affect me. Also, other things that may also bring this on for you, maybe, or for other people watching this, it might be class, race, gender, feeling unqualified, um, and like general insecurities about what you're worthy of or, or whether you're worthy of being where you are. One bad review can just sort of mess up your mind and break that, your, that flow that you have currently in life, despite all the um, positive reviews or positive acknowledgements from people, just having one can sort of break you and make you start to doubt yourself. So uh, I'm talking I'm talking about this thing, this imposter syndrome thing, mainly out of experience and especially because yesterday um, I received out of nowhere, out of the blue from work, a card. We've all been working from home since Feb. 
um, since the lockdown, since you know, um, and I've really, really struggled with work, um, struggled with, I don't know, just getting up in the morning or having a shower, it's just, it's too much for me, <laughs> I swear, it's too much, I'm tired, but yeah. <laughs> So, um, despite that, I've been able to really deliver a lot at work um, and I received this card out of the blue without... I, didn't, I wasn't expecting it. I shared it on my Instagram. Uh, for people who follow me from Instagram, I'm sure you saw it when I shared it. I was so happy. Um, we had like a general meeting and I was mentioned, not just me as, long, uh, as well as other people, but I was mentioned in a huge group of people you know over let's say over 150 people in that meeting but like I was acknowledged and I was like oh, really am I that am I that awesome <laughs> and then shortly after I received a letter uh, sorry a card from my team um, talking about my hard work and my contribution in the team it just was like it felt really good. It felt really good. I have to say that it felt really good because for a long time I've been stressing, uh, sometimes crying while doing my work because a lot of times it feels like I don't know what I'm doing, uh, but I carry on. <laughs> I just carry on with it. I don't know how, but I just do. Um, but yeah, it, it just feels good. This feeling of um, fear or feeling of doubt that you're not supposed to be where you are, it brings on anxiety, could bring on depression, uh, it could also make you stop putting in that effort that you've been putting in in your work or in your relationship, career, in whatever. Um, oh, I was going to give an example of how imposter syndrome can affect relationship because I feel that it mainly, most people mainly talk about it in the work environment, but in relationship it does happen because I remember a, a previous relationship I was in and I'm this type of person who I don't really put much effort into <laughs> dressing up. I just feel like it's just too much of a hassle. I'd rather wear something <laughs> comfy like my yoga pants or my harem pants, you know. Um, I don't I don't wear makeup. And I would see these type of girls who was all glammed up. I really, really admire those girls. Uh, they look so beautiful with the bone straight hair and all that. I admire it, but I don't want to be like that because that's not me, but I do admire and find these women really beautiful and like the type of person he he was uh, I don't know I just felt like he was meant to be with those type of girls and I felt unworthy of being with him because I, I didn't put that much effort Um yeah so these are certain ways you can spring up in life uh, and I wanted to share what I've been doing and how I sort of bring myself back to appreciate my efforts, appreciate um, my colleagues, appreciate my career and just appreciate in general everything that I've been doing <laughs> in life and trying to make myself feel that I deserve these things and I hope that it helps you as well. It wouldn't cure, <laughs> it wouldn't cure your imposter syndrome because as many times as I do it, certain times it still shows up but it's just acknowledging and knowing that this is imposter syndrome and then working forwards and doing something to some <laughs> my ninja self came out doing something to fix it so i wrote down some points just so i don't forget and i, I might be looking down um so one of the things that i do is actually to share it i share it a lot with my sister i share it a lot a lot with my boyfriend um, and sometimes I share with my brother or a friend my friend Reggie 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 I share with her a lot you know um, and like I said in my in one of my videos I said a problem shared is half solved there's always that relief when you share it and then having those close people around you who understand and can say the right things that will help you feel better really so this is one way to um, help really help you stop being an anxious or help you stop feeling like an imposter um yes uh, another thing that i do is write write things down journaling um there's a lot of things that journaling helps with and this is one of the things that journaling will help 
I try to do daily journaling, but I must admit, I don't do it. I, I mostly do it monthly, and I do a huge one at the end of every year. But I want to try to maybe start doing it weekly. I'll try, but it's not really a big deal for me. But writing these things down, writing down your achievements, uh, uh, reminiscing, thinking about all the efforts that you've put, think about the times that you studied for... Uh, for me, I would think about the, ti the times that I put in so much effort, studied for my um, BA trainings and exams, uh, the times that I've um, added value to a company or added a lot of value to a project, uh, the times that I've helped my colleagues, things like that. So I, ra I would write those things down. Also keeping cards, like such card that I received yesterday, I kept a PDF version of it to help you remember that, yes, these people actually see the hard work that you do. Also identifying that, like I said before, identifying uh, and knowing is, is a really good thing. Just starting that process of identifying that, look girl, you're good, you're super, you're awesome. This is just imposter syndrome. You'll be fine, you know what I mean? At the same time, also track track your mistakes, track your achievements. The in most times, in generally in life, you have more mistakes, I think, or more bad experiences than good. So I feel that tracking those things helps you appreciate those mistakes and the th and how you've learned from them and moved moved um, forward from them. Like in my my last video about failure and losing a job. Um, I did something like that. So if you if you'd like to know, know more about that, uh, how how to deal with failure, <laughs> watch that video. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A third thing I don't know how many things I've given Lam, but a third or fourth thing is um, having a mantra, having a, an affirmation. For me, mine is you got this. <laughs> You got this, you can do it, you got this. That's what I always tell myself. Um, when I start crying and looking at my laptop like I don't know what to do, and I just say, and saying your name, saying your name. A lot of people say, mention your name more than you do. But saying that, I don't know, there is something about it. I just say, Philly, you got this. You can do it, just do it. You know? <laughs> Another affirmation that I say, which was uh, shared with me by one of my managers many many years ago at the start of my career um, where I was struggling with one project and I cried I actually cried to this person but it was Nigerian so it's like we had this kind of <laughs> relationship um, and he said to me what doesn't kill you make you stronger what doesn't kill you makes you stronger you know if you're not if it's not gonna kill you you you'll be fine just carry on carry on Yes, yeah, so those are my two motivational self-talks that I give myself. Have motivational self-talks. Sit down is also part of um, reviewing or tracking and recollecting, um, talking to yourself, just having a conversation with yourself. It's fine. You're not crazy. <laughs> anyway, so a final one is having this a thought or feeling that you don't deserve to be where you are i i think it's it's a sign of growth it's a sign of growth um and like being outside of com outside your comfort zone is a sign of growth you've removed yourself from that space of uh being comfortable and thrown yourself into an entirely new space um which makes you feel fear but you're doing it anyway you're doing it Try to acknowledge that you're still doing it and just give yourself that credit. Um, yeah, because that's the only way you will grow. If you don't experience certain types of difficulties, how will you grow if you're still where you are? You know what I mean? So it's all part of growth. Try to remember that. And finally, um, gratitude. I would always finish with gratitude. Just make yourself be in that space of gratitude gratitude for every mistake gratitude for every experience whether negative or positive or positive and just be grateful just be grateful in general grateful for your journey once i start talking about gratitude like this i, will, I can just go go out of point so let me stop that then um, um so another thing 
is I feel that this um, imposter syndrome affects a lot of people who are like um, high achievers. It <laughs> affects high achievers uh, and also people who are ac acknowledged. Uh, people who are accomplished. <laughs> acknowledged. <laughs> it affects people who are very accomplished because you start to feel that how did I get here? You know what I mean? Um, and being able to identify it means that you're mindful being mindful and you're knowing and you're yeah you can tell it means that you're uh, self aware as well so good job good job if you feel that you're an imposter seriously good job you're you're doing really well <laughs> you're doing really well you're just learning to manage these things help okay, uh, I'm going to end that there I hope you've learned something I hope this has helped in some way or, or another please remember to like subscribe and leave any comments below about this topic have you had an experience of imposter syndrome how did you deal with it uh, so as always i wish you peace love and everything nice bye guys <laughs>